Welcome to today's episode of the Connect 7 podcast. I am your host, Thaddeus Sims. And if you've been connected with me lately, share an episode with a friend because y'all know I'm going to say something crazy that's actually going to help them. And today I have another announcement for you, which is the same one from last episode, which is family time. So this is something new, never done it before, but family time is going to be this spot or the place in time where we're going to just be live. So it's going to be a live episode where you all get to come in, you know, get in the chat, ask some questions. So we'll be essentially creating the episode together. But this time you all won't be just hearing from me. Y'all will be a part of it too. So I know y'all have a little bit of a wild side, but do keep in mind this is going to go live, so be weird. And of course, so let me say this, it is going to happen. The time is December 1st, 7 p.m. EST, right? Now that is for those who are, you know, wherever you're at in the world, just put that down. For those of you who are near me in New Zealand, that's going to be December 2nd at 1 p.m. So as you already know, these time zones, I Yeah, big difference. So moving on to the fun fact, which is hippos sweat turns red when they become upset. Now, before I even kind of go into that fact, I have to say that this fun fact was brought to you all by the Libra Feminine Hygiene Products. And before y'all look, because I know y'all like, how the hell did we get there? Yeah, so... My partner, her feminine products, they come with fun facts, which is funny. And no, 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 I have not been using that, you know, forget my to get my fun facts. That hasn't been the cheat code. However, they give her this list with these, with, I guess it comes in a box. And I was like, you know, I got to use that for an episode. And I just got to let them know. And no, I they, they did not sponsor me, but I just found it funny. And I was like, man, I got to use it. So, you know, thank you, Libra. And going now with the hippos, if y'all know hippos like I do, them motherfuckers aggressive. Like, I think I seen a video. I think one was literally beating the fuck out of like a lion or a cheetah. It was one of them big pussies out in the world. Like, it was stumping the fuck up out of it. And I was just like, bruh, like, you not even scared. But here you is stumping... (sighs) you know, aggressive pussies out here. And then I think I seen one attack like a, y'all know, I can't tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile from the video, from the video. I I, I didn't go to school for that, but it was one of them. And it was beating the fuck up out of that. Like homeboy didn't even touch that hippo. And if, if fuck around and find out was an animal, it was definitely that hippo in that video, because not only did it stump the fuck out, the pussy that I was talking about. And then I seen another video of it beating the fuck out of whatever. It could have been a crocodile, alligator, one of them. And the fact that that bitch went in the water and said, bitch, I dare you. Like, the energy was like, I dare you to bring your ass out here. And it's like, I seen some of that red tint, but I mean, I guess they was sweating. And I guess it was for for blood because them bitches are aggressive. I ain't going to lie. If I ever seen a hippo. I'm going to be kind of pissed. I ain't going to even lie to you. If I seen a hippo like out in the wild, I would be pissed off at myself because how dare I put myself in a position to be out in this man's, sorry, this animal's domain. Who the fuck am I? Because I'd be upset. And if I go out that way, I don't really know if my ancestors would welcome me with open arms. And I might get my ass beat out of fact because I might be like, why the fuck were you out there? Did you not get the signs? Did you not catch on when we said, when we sent those videos to you on Facebook? No. So, it won't be me. Now, let us get into the topic of today's episode, which is purpose. And more specifically, Connect Seven's purpose. Now, I have to give you all a bit of a background with this because it's going to be a very serious episode. And some of you, I can probably tell by the tone of my voice and my breathing because it's like, oh, this is going to be a little scary for me, right? Because I'm really putting some things out here that I thought I would never put out on this show. But it seems as though 
life, not even life, because I'm not going to say, I'm not going to put that on life. It, it seems as though that this is the best choice, not just for me, but for all of you who listen. So a bit of background. Now, um, I've been working on getting myself balance, right back balance. And to make that long story short, is that my mind, I have a huge amount of capacity to process a lot of information. And just because I can do that doesn't mean that I need to all the time. So sometimes I can wake up and like read a whole bunch of things and it's just like I'm filling my mind up with some stuff. And sometimes it's just like, no. And again, it just goes back to the simplicity of I have this capacity for a lot of information. And so my mind like will take me places where I'm like, okay, I got to look into this, organize that, look into that, organize that. Then I do it. And then in my mind, it's like, okay, I somehow I'm like, I need to do this. Like all of these tasks by tonight. And it's just like, bro, you sh- that those, all those tasks should be broken up t- like throughout the week. And I'm like, okay. So I had to take some time to like do that. And so that's caused me to be in like really imbalanced. And I'm the type as well, which I got to work on my words on this, but in prog, and I'm in progress of this. When I have my mind set on something, I get really invested into it and I'm excited. I get passionate about it. I just do all these things and I really get invested into it. And some things um, kind of happen where I have no choice but to get back into them. What this means is that I am a very responsible person. So I, I, I am that. I'm the type I will do all my responsibilities first so that I can put all of that time and energy into the things that I need to. But sometimes I can get so invested that I'm just like, okay, you know what? I know I set a timer to be done with this by five, but I can do 10 more minutes. 10 minutes turns to 20, 20 turns to 45. And then eventually that would lead to me burning out. And it's just like, yeah, I need to watch that. But sometimes I get so into it that I forget all of that. I'm like, okay, wait. So it's been coming back, you know, for me to get back into balance. And these past few episodes, it's been that call to come back to like spirit. And in that, it's been a lot Meaning I like left that realm because like I said to you guys, I get so invested. So I was in that realm very heavy. And as y'all heard in the last episode, I kind of like left, we'll say I left spirit. I left the realm of spirit. And I was like, I need to get my, my physical shit in balance. You know, let me get my shit together. And I did. And I discovered more things and learned things. And now it's just like, I'm at a place where it's just like, I have to get back balanced. So some of those things I've learned how to do that. So before I would like meditate kind of before I started my day and just, you know, talk with spirit and connect. And what that did was it balanced out my mind. So it would flush out all these things that I felt like I had to do. And I was able to just connect with spirit and things were just more clear, more direct. Like I was like, okay, I know my mind is having me do all of this, but this is what I'm thinking. And spirit is just like, yeah, no, this is this is where we're at. This is where you're at. This is how you do this. Da 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 da. And it's like that capacity for information goes into the spirit, where spirit can give me all this information, and I can process it. And it's just like, oh, I feel rejuvenated. I feel fresh and that balanced out my mind because it was like I was able to process all the things that I thought that I needed to do had to do and it was just like yeah no and what I learned was that yes again I have this great capacity for my mind but I tend to use my mind for a lot of things that I don't need to and that may sound crazy but for me it's just like yeah you don't need to use your mind and we need to actually kind of take you out of there for a bit and this balance has led me to create a, what's the word I'm looking for? My own kind of um, habits or checklist um, for me to maintain balance. And that balance was just in my spiritual life, um, 
We will say physical life. And then we're going to talk about a whole new one that I, I never again thought I would ever see on the podcast. So it, this this one, gosh, it feels like it feels like I'm, as y'all hear, I'm like adjusting my seat. It feels as though like, again, it's kind of, I'm, I'm nervous to say it because it's like, I keep saying it. I have never thought I would talk about this on the podcast, but it's, I'm just going to say it. So it's three realms, right? You have the, the spiritual realm, you have the physical realm, and then it comes with the magic realm, right? And I was like, I would never talk about like magic, especially like publicly on my podcast. I may, I may say a few things that I've gathered from that world, but like, I wouldn't just talk about it because I'm like, bro, spirit is already, the spiritual realm is already a huge thing. Now we fit to get into the magic realm. Like, bro, that's that I, I'm like, nah. So I've always kept that part of my life very private. And when I say very private, like even some of my close friends, which y'all sometimes hear me reference on the podcast, even they don't know about that. And we're going to talk about that. And the reason why I say that in particular is because it goes back to what I started off with, the purpose of Connect 7. And what oh, what that is, right? That purpose is just being a space for just it's a space for us to like just to connect on those three realms of the spirit realm, magic realm and physical realm. And I've come to discover for me, it's like those things make me happy. It brings me like self-fulfillment. Um, again, a lot of things, a lot of things. But what I've come to learn of with all of this is that this was a world where I was just like, yeah, no, we're going to keep that over here. And spirit and also other listeners have in their own way said that they need me and would like for me to talk about more of these realms because of them kind of tapping into it and them learning about it. And it being a subject that not too many people talk about. And not only that, but there's so many like views and 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 people's backgrounds with it thought processes and it was just like for me I was like I'm not going to bring that public because I don't have time to be trying to one defend what I got going on to talk about all of this when this person hasn't even done x y and z I don't have time for that I'd rather keep my peace but in doing that I've been depriving um those of you who listen to the podcast who would like to learn more about that and who've been craving more of that. And referencing from the last episode, again, I talked about the purpose of like the seven in Connect 7, that seven being the bridge between like the spiritual and the physical realm. And then the connect part is just like being that bridge, right? And utilizing my life and the places that I've been and discover the things I've discovered and all this, that, and the other to kind of like make my life as an example or using my life experiences as episodes and like talking about it. And so what I've been saying, but, and I left out is like I said, I left the world of spirit. So here's my coming out story when it comes to all of this. So I left the world of spirit and I got into the physical world. And so I've had to learn, you know, the hard way. You go to work, you go to school, repeat the process, money, um, relationships in between, um, stresses. A lot of shit is really hard out here in the world. And so in that process of learning, like, about the physical realm, I learned that I kind of had to utilize some of those spiritual principles, and, you know, those spiritual principles that we've all heard of, like praying or, you know, meditation or whatever it is that you connect with. Right. I'm sure you've heard it. Writing things down, speaking, you know, man manifestation, whatever you want to use. And I found for me that some of those things kind of worked. Now, for others, 
they they swear by it. However, I'm going to be honest with you, everything is really connected, but there's things that you kind of have to know in between things, right? And that's kind of part of the journey. That's a part of learning. Sometimes like for you to thrive physically, you need to get your spiritual life, you know, right. But some of us don't know how to access that, right? And then for some of us who need to get our spiritual life right, we need to get into that physical. But this is something that I've discovered and this may not be true for you. So I'm going to say that again. These are some things that I've discovered and this may not be true for you. But one of those things that I've learned was that the spirit realm and the physical realm, they are, they're great. But what I learned was there's a realm in between all of that. And you can call it the magic realm. My ancestors have told me they call it the binding. So, and it's not nothing scary. Basically, it's just kind of like, think of it as there's a world where all the magic in the world is just pretty much all available to us. And this is going to sound crazy because when I explain some of these things, I'm like, bro, this is all going to sound so crazy. And I was just like, this is this is just like so not me because I usually this is conversations that you have with people who get it. But I was just like, you know what? I I don't care. We're going to talk about it because I feel it and we're going to do it. So, again, back to the binding. <laughs> this is me talking myself into it because I'm just like, bruh. But to it with the binding is... Again, think of it as a realm where all magic exists and we all are connected to it. And some of us are more connected to it than others. And it's just a matter of practicing, getting into that realm, learning about it. Now, when you think of magic, right, when I first was introduced to it, this is now this is going back to, like I said, when I left spirituality and I tapped into the physical stuff, I had to learn about the magic stuff. I thought. Again, when I think of magic, the first one for some people may be like, oh, you think like a magic trick, like someone pulls a rabbit out of a hat. And it's just like, yeah, no. And then you hear the other form of magic and then people think, oh, my gosh, demonic. And um, you're tapping into things that are like really bad for you or, you know, your soul is this and you're going to go to hell and you're going to do this. Like if you're tapping into things, you're going to open up doors and, and this, that, and the other. But I'm here to tell you that a lot of us. Literally, and it's funny now that I think about it, a lot of us have been practicing magic and don't even know. And it's nothing that is, quote unquote, scary. And it's it's not, quote unquote, bad. Right. And I must just say this for some of us in the community, because some of y'all will swear up and down on uh-uh, nah, that you kind of losing me here because you talk about shit and I don't even practice. I will definitely tell you. You, if you, you have practiced in it in some way, or you have definitely been around it and you did not know that it was until someone kind of told you. So a common thing, a very, very common magical thing we will get into just to kind of get y'all in there so y'all don't think I'm crazy is let's talk about birthdays, right? (sighs) Let's talk about, okay, we have a birthday. We have this celebration, a gathering of people on this particular day. And on your birthday, you have a birthday cake, you have candles, right? If any of y'all watch anything magical, candles are involved. Am I saying candles are magical? No. But are they a tool? Yes. But think about it. You have a birthday, all right, this special day. You have a celebration. You have a gathering of people all surrounding you. You get candles. You light them. They say make a wish. You make this wish in your mind. You blow out the candle, you do an act. Some people say it's a ritual. Some people is like, bro, it's just a birthday. So I'm going to just give y'all some common things in that, right? Ladies, especially in the black community, you've probably been taught and probably got your ass beat by your mom by her telling you, you shouldn't be putting, you should not have your purse on the floor. And if you, if this rings a bell, I want you to take a moment and think about that. Why is it? Fill in the blank of what your mom said. Why shouldn't you have your, you know, your purse on the floor? Was it that they told you, you know, that's how you, whatever it is, something with money related, or that's how this, that, the other. Think about where that comes from. Again, in the black community, I'm going to say, when someone is sweeping the floor, when it comes to, oh, no, I don't sweep my feet, because whatever it is, fill in the blank. So even if you will say, quote unquote, didn't practice, 
it's in it's in there. It's very deeply rooted in there, right? I cannot say for other cultures because I didn't grow up that way. But I would say in the other cultures that I have been around, there have been, we'll say the superstitions or um, certain things that people do. We'll say they do for good luck or they wear certain things, right? There is this bit of magic or faith or whatever it is you call it in the things that we do. For some of us, it's stronger and it's kind of been more so in our upbringing. For others, not really. And for some of y'all, it really may have been, but you just didn't know, right? We all got that crazy relative that we thought was crazy that they'd be saying this, that, and the other. And for some of y'all, again, if I'm like making y'all like, okay, mm, that doesn't mean anything. There are some of y'all who have visions, dreams, right? If you go to church, y'all probably hear prophets and different things like that. So we'll say people who have the gift to see, right? To see things and tap into things, um, connect with spirit, see all types of stuff, connect with the answers, whatever it is, y'all get where I'm coming from, right? What I'm simply saying to you is that there's a source for all of that. When I say a source, let me be clear because I realize, you know, left to people's imagination, they can go like crazy. We'll say there's a source for a lot of things. So we'll say the creator, this, that, and the other, universe, whatever you want to fill in the blank. But we'll say your magic, your energies and stuff like that, they come from a place. That's all I'm going to say really with that. They come from a place. But I actually know. I'm actually going to go into it. So it's just like, yeah, they come from a place. Again, what I've been told by my ancestors, you can either call it the magic realm, but I'm more familiar with calling it the binding because that's what they told me. So I kind of go with my ancestors' tongue with it. You may, for some of you who are already in that world, you may hear it as a different way or have learned of it. As you know, each region, they call different things, different stuff. So it will say in this case, what I've learned on my journey is that <clears throat> those abilities and things like that, they are part of you. They're integrated in you, this, that, and the other. It's in your blood. But they're in different realms that, you know, you have access to. As a human being, you're not just entitled to this realm. However, you have access to other realms. You're a multidimensional being, we'll say, right? And so bringing all of this kind of like back to center, because I kind of know I, I, I went there. Um, again, this was just a world where I didn't talk about but for myself, I had to learn that this was something that was available to me. And I've learned that my people before me, either consciously or subconsciously, knew about this and utilized this. And I've learned that the binding is like the place where I would say is the, we'll say that's the core, right? And the physical and the spiritual are like reflections. So the spiritual realm and the physical realm are reflections of that place. So you've probably heard, you know, reflections, um, we'll say with the physical and different things like that. Like, yeah, you're here, but your spirit is there, this, that, and the other, all connected, yada, yada, yada. But I'm going to go into all that deeper in later episodes, but I'm just kind of breaking y'all into the cusp of it all. So for me... When I had to get out of like, you know, the physical, I had to learn that certain things just wasn't working for me. And I think most of the people who listen to the podcast that I've connected with, I think y'all can resonate with you've been told to do certain things, i.e. work hard or build a business or um, do whatever. Right. You've been told very physical ways of doing stuff, right? And you've done it and it can be hard and some of y'all have the grit to continue to do it. But something in the back of your mind is probably telling you like there has to be a better way, has to be an easier way. And I'm not saying easy means like, you know, bad or a shortcut, but I would say easy means a way that works and that is in alignment with you and your highest good. So I'm gonna take it up another level. There are some of you who, again, have been told, you know, work hard, this, that, and the other. And then you have the privilege of having some of that spiritual background, depending on whatever your faith is, be it, you know, connecting to whoever it is that you pray to, whichever creator that you're into, you know what I mean? You know, this is all a safe space here. So, you know, 
you have that to, to pray, to ask, to have that faith, to believe in the things that you don't see yet, to write these things down, speak them into existence, right? So you have a bit of that spiritual, you know, background with it. Now, this, I'm going to take it a step further because there may be some of you who were like me, who have both of those backgrounds, but something was just missing, right? Something didn't bring it together, so to speak, right? And I don't know if, the, again, that's why my ancestors called it the binding, but it was just like understanding like that that magic rail is like that which binded like the spiritual and the physical together. But it was learning how to utilize and work from that place of the binding. So I'm gonna give y'all a common example that worked for me. And I've told some friends about this and I've learned people gonna either work with what you give them or they don't. And that's perfectly fine. So we're going to go back with the common thing, which is money, right? Everybody has their own thing for money. Um, there are some people who are, you know, born with it. Great. Some people who are really good with it. Great. There are some of us who weren't born with it and had to learn how to be good with it. Either way, we all have different backgrounds of money. So I can only speak on my journey with it, that I've learned that I, it was easy. I can go to work, you know, go get a paycheck, do what I got to do, get a business, go through that route, do what I got to do, um, get a skill, learn about it just to make more money, this, that, and the other. And what I've learned was that it's 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 something that's happening. It's something that, that works for some, but it wasn't natural with me. And what I mean now, we're going to go a little bit into some of the spiritual and the magical aspects is like, once you get into these worlds, you find out that there's natural ways to do things and then there's human ways of doing things. Human ways of doing things ain't normally the best. Then you have the natural way of doing things. And this is kind of like working with nature, working with the earth, working with um, the common things around you, right? Once you kind of get in alignment with nature and you go with the natural way, Things, there's an ease that happens. That's why I say there's, you know, a bit of an easiness. There's an ease that happens. There's an alignment. And so, again, what does this have to do with money? So my peoples taught me what they did back in the day. And so by my peoples, I say my ancestors. So my ancestors taught me um, what they did back in the day. And what that was was, okay, what is money? And, you know, going into it going into a deeper, talking with them and different things like that. I'm like, okay, money is tangible, untangible. It was like currency. So I'm just saving y'all the bullshit. They were just like currency. Okay. I was like, okay, there's currency. There's like currency. So they was like, what is the closest thing that you can think of in nature that's like that? I was like, currency, current, wa water. You know what I mean? Got into it and they were like, okay, water. You know, a lot of things with money tends to go in the in the realm of water. So you have a stream of income, different streams of income, you know, a flow of money coming in, going out, um, you know, again, currency, just all types of different things like that. And so they were telling me about, you know, water. So I had to go by water and it was just like, you know, explaining to me of like working with that. And it was like, you need something that represents that money, you know, for you. And in this case, it has to be something that's moving, something that's constantly in flow. You know, you're never running out, you know, it's, it's coming in, it's coming out. You have an abundance of it where water is abundant. And so they taught me that getting a fountain, right? And I'm, I, it's way too early for me to tell y'all some spells and stuff like different things like that. But we're going we gonna to keep it very basic, you know. If y'all want that, y'all can y'all can ask me. We'll go deeper into that. But for now, they were like, you know, get a fountain. And, you know, the little water fountains that you would have. And it was like, let this represent, you know, income coming in, um, you know, for your home. That way it's steady flowing. It's water. And when it gets low, you know when to add water to it. You know what I mean? And what that taught me was just like getting in that rhythm, that natural rhythm of like, okay, money coming in, money coming out is a different stream of income. So I have a stream of water flowing. This represents my income. So I, I learned that once I got in alignment with that, I realized and learned like my, like how I ran money was like how I was going with that fountain. And I would notice like when the water was low, my income was a little bit low. I'm like, interesting. When I filled that bitch back up, 
y'all, for some of y'all who are like skeptical, skeptical, <laughs> you know, you might be like, okay, well, subconsciously, that's what you're thinking. So you're programming yourself to do it. Baby, if that works for you, that works for you as long as that money increases. So for me, it was pouring that water in there and doing a little razzle dazzle. And when I poured it in there, I just felt like good. And I was just like, okay, the money's coming in. And I noticed that opportunities would just like happen. You know what I mean? New different, like different things for money to come in or um, a promotion, right? Um, all types of things. Um, I noticed when I did it at my last job, I ended up getting a promotion. You know, it was more money. Again, steady incomes, different stuff coming in. I was just like, damn. This felt good. It was easy, and I didn't really do anything different or hard. I didn't get a second job. I didn't do this, but with that constantly coming in and flowing, it improved my finances. And again, there was things in between, but my ancestors, you know, told me about, and we did it, and I was like, damn, this works. I say all of that to say, like, there's natural ways for doing things, right? For some people, you may need more stability in life. The natural approach would probably be to go out into nature and just go out and just walk, you know, in the woods or different things like that or whatever, um, you know, parks that you have and just get that stability, you know, feel the earth, you know, under you and different things like that. So it's different things that you do to get in alignment with, you know, yourself, with nature. Now, what does this really have to do with like the magic aspect? Because if you're just saying to go out in nature, that's not really magical. So let's go a little bit deeper into that. So for some of you who do have spiritual gifts or want to tap into more of your spiritual gifts or learning how to connect, nature is the best place, you know, to start with that, you know, learning about your ancestors, who they're from, where they're from, you know, and different things like that. Once you kind of get into this realm, everything starts to become connected is what I'm saying. So you really can't do too much in the binding that's not going to affect the spiritual or the physical. You can't do too much in the physical that's not going to affect the other two, vice versa. And once you tap more into it, you will start to find that the magical stuff will kick in and it will be very specific to you and what you have going on. You will learn how you operate. You will learn when is it best for you to create or manifest or to make things happen? You will know when to pray or listen and get the information you need to. You may you will learn how to work with what works with you. I'm going to repeat that. You will learn how to work with what works with you. And as you do that, things start to get a bit easier. You start to have more insight. You're figuring out this works for you. This doesn't work for you. You're realizing that the reason why you're having a lot of headaches and a lot of bodily pain is because of this area over here that you're neglecting. You start to understand more and it kind of takes you into a deeper, deeper aspect, which I like to call it takes you into the inner world of things. For all my Connect 7 listeners who are students and about to start their first jobs, I have a game changing recommendation for you. If you were told, like I was told, that you need a resume to get a job but thought you had no experience, don't worry. Your boy got you. First off, you need to know about my girl, Ross Fisher. She's not only an international CV and resume specialist, but she's also the brilliant mind behind the book called My First CV. What that means for you is that she's going to say that as from being overwhelmed like we all was when we needed a resume for the first job and thought we didn't have experience. Her book is a how-to guide into creating your first CV. What you'll discover is that you have tons of experience and expertise that is needed in the work world today. Now, I know that some of y'all have small attention spans, but it's a quick read and very much an investment into building your dream career. You can click the link in this episode's description and download your copy today. Now go out there and get that money. Outside of here, you have the outside world, this, that, and the other, but a lot of people are very afraid, and a lot of people don't take the time to discover that inner world. And a lot of people have asked me that question, like, what places would you, do, would you rather explore, you know, outer space, or would you, like, you know, under the ocean? I was like, nah, I prefer inner space. And they look at me like, what? And I'm like, yeah, inner space. Like, what the hell is inner space? I'm like, inner space is inside of you. It's those discoveries. It's all of the things that make you you and the things that you don't know about. It's all in there. 
And it's a whole door that you open up to your emotions, your mental, why you do the things you do, connecting you to your bloodline, connecting you to the, the magic that's in there, the fears that's in there, and all of that. And so I say a lot of this stuff, again, is more of an introduction. And I feel as though later down the line, I'll talk more about that, which actually just kind of goes into kind of like my next point, which is just everything with the podcast in the sense of like, I've learned that this is definitely a space that I want to create for people who do want to like get into these realms, but get into them safely, (laughs) right? And not in no judgmental way, not in no um, criticizing or this, that, any other, but a safe space to really just want to connect into that realm of spirit and that realm of like magic. And of course the physical realm too, because a lot of us have specialties and strengths in different areas, but having a space to where you can just tap into and it's just like, okay, I know that when I listen to this podcast, right, I know I'm entering a space where I can walk this bridge and I can get some insight on that spiritual aspect that I'm craving and I'm missing and I don't really know how to get into that world, right? Or I've been, magic has been something that I've been attracted to, but I have no idea how to get into that. I have no idea what the thoughts are, this, that, and the other. And it's just like, okay, well, let's talk about it. You know, let's not judge you or let's not say this, that, and the other. And that, I'm not going to project things, you know, that's bad on you, but this is something that's been calling you okay, let's kind of talk about it. Let's have a safe space to talk about it and making it to where, like this is a space where making it to where all of these things aren't so like so far away or like a whole different approach where it's just like, I have no idea how to even start and get into that, but making it to where it's something tangible because you have to have that physical aspect. Like you can tap into that spiritual and magical aspect to improve, you know, your health or, you know, your finances, I mean, your relationships. And I ain't talking about them crazy shits that we be seeing on TikToks where people be doing stuff. And y'all know what I'm talking about. For some of y'all who don't know what I'm talking about, you know, mm, we'll just say people who be doing some crazy shit for love. I'm going to leave it at that. (laughs) But I just want this to be a space where, again, we can just talk about that. And it's topics. And for some of you, because I've been asked a lot of questions outside of the podcast where people have said, I would love to know how you even connect with your ancestors. How do you even open that door for those gifts, you know, and just talking about those things and helping you guys, um, you know, get over the fears of it. Cause I won't lie when I first heard of it and kind of was in this, I, I was born into this world, but discovering more stuff, it can be scary when you don't know. And I will say most of the things is just the the fear comes from the unknown. And that's what we want. I want to talk about, have that space where we can talk about those things that are unknown, because I will say, and I'm going to just say this now, my way may not be the way that works for you. However, This could be a space that you can bounce what I've learned off of what you're experiencing and take what works for you. And that's kind of what I've done kind of on this journey. There's been, you know, friends um, and people I've met who are, we'll say, kind of in that spiritual community. And it was just like, "Mm, I don't fully fuck with him, but he did. He did say something that I I resonate with and I can take that from him. And then there's the magical realm of things like, "Mm, I see that they practice this, but it's not something that I feel gravitated to, but I can, I I can work with this. Like, you know, there's something I, I, I can pick off on and especially when it comes to the magic realm like that, I feel like I'm, I'm way more cautious on because the things I see in the magic realm, not not necessarily on that side of things, but the things that I see people do, I'm just like, bro, who you didn't have nobody to talk to you or, or help you or daring. You just jumping into stuff and you you have no idea. And I will tell y'all this because I, I like to be honest. And this is not to scare you, but 
and re- shit, really, to be honest with you, hell, it's in all the realms, really, because I was about to say, you know, talking to these things may seem scary, and, it, and it's not for somebody to just jump in and just play around with. But it's not just the spiritual and magic realm that it's the physical realm, too, because there be some wild shit that happens, you know, on Earth. Right. And it's wild shit that can happen over there, too. And I just want to let y'all know, like, it's it's not something to play with, just as most things. But once you learn, you know, a bit how to navigate it's a bit easier. You know, we were all afraid to probably go to school our first time or do this one thing or go to a this, this different place. But with enough time, you know, we went there, we survived and we were good. And now we know how to go there. And so that may be your experience. Now, I'm going to talk about more of these things just in the next few episodes, more in the next episodes to come. And we're just going to, you know, go into that. But I'm going to say it was very hard. <laughs> it was very hard for me to kind of, again, just open up and talk about this realm of stuff. Because huh, I'm going I'm to I'm really be honest with y'all. It was a few things. One was like, man, I'm probably going to scare off some people if I open this door. And I was like, God, that, 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 I don't know. And my team that I work with was just like, bruh, you, you need to, you need to, you need to talk to people because there are a lot of people out here who, who, who need what you have and what you're talking about. And I was just like, okay. All right. And then the second one was just that I was just like, bro, this is not a door that needs to be open for everybody. Cause I'm like, I've seen some crazy shit that people have done. And it's just like, yes. But the only difference here is that you are talking about the stuff and you can provide some type of guidance and warnings versus people who are like, I'm just going to read this off the internet and just do it. And it's just like, baby, no, no, you don't do that. And again, also too, like that, the magic realm was just very private for my life. And I was just like, yeah, I don't talk about that. So it was just a lot of fears just with coming out and just talking about all of this. But I've learned that that is not the way to go for me. And it's just like, if I'm going to be completely open, you know, in the podcast and for different things and help people, then that's what we need to talk about. And this, again, kind of reflects into the beginning of my journey of getting back balance. Because when I was talking to the creator, um, it was just having a conversation. It was just like getting our intentions very clear. And I'm actually going to share something on my journey, and this is more like that spiritual end. And I'm probably going to leave you with something that will make you look at purpose differently. But in speaking with the creator, um, I was learning how to balance myself in the physical realm. And there was knowledge that was given to me. And I can only give y'all two points of that knowledge because the other ones I'm still utilizing and, and 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 experimenting with. So the first one was clear intent. Um, and that clear intent, what I've learned is clear intent is that agreement between you and the creator, right? Keeping it simple. We have intentions of doing this, that, and the other, but there's a difference between intentions and that clear intent. And I'm learning that that clear intent is the one that kind of just like overshadows everything else. So again, I've learned that one of the pillars of the physical realm was clear intent or clear intentions. And so again, that clear intentions is that agreement between you and the creator, right? Once you know what that is, then it will lead to purpose. So for me, that clear intent between me and spirit Sorry, me and the creator. Sorry, because as I when I get into these things, that's when a bunch of spirits be kind of like popping up. Like, wait, 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 y'all get it. Chill out, chill out, chill out. Let me let me finish before y'all jump in here. So that was my conversation between me and um, the creator. And the clear intentions between us was happiness and self fulfillment. And the creator is all about for me, for me, for me, for me. The creator was like for you. 
happiness. Like that is my clear intentions for you. But that's just my end of the, you know, the agreement. What what do you bring to this? What do you want in this agreement? I was just like, you know, it was relating to Connect 7 and it was just like that self-fulfillment, like to be fulfilled, to to do things. Like I've I've done a lot of things in my life where I, I did them and they were great and all. And into some people's eyes, they were very successful. But to me, it was just more of a... A, a task that needed to be done and I did it. And I read it, I wasn't really fulfilled by it. It was just like, oh, okay, you know, great. But what I was craving was something that made me feel fulfilled. And I learned that when I do the podcast when I do the podcast and do the episodes, like after I'm done recording, like I feel like like I, I filled my cup up. And you've probably heard that along the way. People was like, you know, you got to find things to to fill your cup up. Like before you can help others, you know, your cup has to be filled. You know, don't empty your cup and you're trying to help people on an empty cup. But you have to fulfill your cup. And what happens with that when your cup is filled and that overflow is happening, then that extra can flow into other people. And I was just like, yes. And I was like, that's what I was looking for. And I'm so happy to like know that I've found that and I'm doing that. And so that was like my end of the agreement, like, okay, bringing like that self-fulfillment. And it was just like that clear intent for Connect 7 of just like that happiness and that self-fulfillment. And it was just like, okay, boom, I know my intentions with Connect 7 here. And now it went to the next, um, we'll say pillar of the physical realm, which is purpose. And so I... I had to really kind of get out of my mind and really receive what my team was saying with this. And this part wasn't with the creator, but we'll say another um, spirit that I work with that was just giving me these pillars with this world. And I had to, I'm going to my notes with it because some of these things I have to like write down. But where are we? Because I was like, that was some really good shit that I was getting from. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I had to learn, there it is, was the whole thing with purpose is purpose designs, and and in his words, purpose designs the earth realm, right? Or purpose designs the physical realm. It it had to take me a a moment to, to digest this and use my intelligence for this, right? Because the spirits that I work with, they'll give me things, but they don't just throw it at me. It's more like, okay, I'm going to say this and it's up to me to like process and, and, and get what they mean by it. And what that does for me is it allows me to one, kind of work for it a bit and it, and it sticks more when I'm kind of putting the work versus you just telling and telling me everything and I'm just listening and it just don't be it. Because baby, I ain't no auditory, uh, audio, audio, auditory learner. Like, I got to do something. I got to see it. You know what I mean? And so when he was saying, the spirit that I was working with, when he was saying that, you know, purpose designs the earth realm, I had to, again, process that. And what that came down to, and I'm going to slow this down because, y'all, some things when I'm in this world, I I understand them, but my mind may not understand it, but some parts of me gets it. So I'm going to break this down for you, what I mean, in the simplest form for like purpose designs, um, earth realm. And I'm probably for some of y'all, y'all probably used to hearing purpose designs reality. I don't know. But what I got purpose designs, earth realm or the physical. Think of the battery, right? The purpose of the battery or a battery and a battery as you know it's what it's that little thing or big thing that charges or gives power to stuff right but if you if you take a moment to just you know not think of the little double a battery that you for to see you know in the aisle of the store if you really take a moment to look at the purpose right of that battery you will learn that that purpose has literally shaped our entire lives 
based based off of the purpose for the battery. And here's what I'm talking about. The world has literally shaped and and changed because we need a battery because of the purpose of the battery. You have a, a phone that you're listening to, but that requires a battery. Your laptop, your car, you know, they have a battery. But let me kind of, again, dissect this. The car and the phone, all these things that require a battery, they're great. When your phone is on and the battery is working, you can do a tremendous amount of things. Run a business, call somebody, contact someone, videos, creativity, a car. You can travel different, you know, great distances. You know what I mean? A laptop, fill in the blank. You know, y'all could do all types of things on there and watch some videos you ain't supposed to watch. But there's so many things that can happen with these inventions. Think of your remote just for your TV, right? Your 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 remote is great and all for you to change the things, but you couldn't use none of those things if you didn't have a battery. And because of the purpose of the battery, everything, most things um, that we use, especially in electronics and in, in, in this world, most things require you having some sort of battery. And they are the world is designed to, okay, if we're going to make a laptop, it's automatically that we have to make something for the battery. For your phone, we automatically have to do something for the battery. So everything that we enjoy, again, most of these things are shaped for us to have a battery for them. And it was very simple for me, but that, that made me really look at purpose differently. And it just, it, it brought the question of, what is, you know, some people may say, what is your purpose or this, that, and the other. And if you want to go there, you can. But if you think of the purpose of something, if you have that purpose and you know what that purpose is, it can literally reshape the world around you because of that simple purpose. So we will say, we know, well, well I guess we could take it deep. We'll say, let's take you, for example. You have a purpose. Everybody does. Now, some of us, you know, we we around some people who we wish they didn't have a purpose, but that's not here nor there, unfortunately. But we all have a purpose. Now, I got to be petty a little bit because some of these, some people got a purpose and they just little petty dogs out here. And it's just like, you know, you need your ass beat. You were designed for me to beat your ass because the way you be fucking with me. Mm. But on a more serious note here is imagine your purpose, right? And knowing that purpose so well. And and walking in that purpose, doing things for that purpose, which leads into the other pillars. But I can't say that now because I'm experimenting. them. Um, but if you know that purpose so well and you're walking into it, you're literally redesigning the world for that purpose. Now, I'm going to I'm going to take that back a little bit and think of the car. Right. The purpose of the car was to, you know, we went from horses, you know, to travel distances to a car to get, you know, great distances. But because of the purpose of that car, faster transportation, that re- that involved us creating roads for that car. That involved us creating streets and um, highways. They're not the best all the time, but it allowed and created us to get the materials to, you know, for people to design these things for stop signs and for you to go places, for you to, you know, go either through the pavement or this, that, and the other. It it literally reshaped the surface of the earth for you to take your car places because of the purpose of the car. And so I say, I keep like, I keep saying this to give you guys examples, just hoping y'all get like the impact of that. And that's something that I've had to learn. So it's like when you're creating something and there's a purpose behind it, it's like now you're reshaping the world for that purpose of whatever it is that you're creating to exist. Like everything will change around that for that purpose to fit into this world. And if y'all don't get that, I don't know what to tell you because that just blew my mind when I was like, that was dropped on me. And I went back to the purpose of Connect 7. And I was like, okay, happiness, self fulfillment, I get that for my clear intent and the purpose. And like I said earlier, right, that purpose just, this just being a space 
where you can connect on those three realms, you know, spirit, magic, physical. And it was just like, huh. Once I once I wrote that down, I was like, bro, I literally feel everything like shifting, you know, for that. And it's like you can literally feel the space. Like for me, sorry. I mean, y'all, but for me, I, I felt this, I felt a lot of like shifts and changes of like, man, you are really creating this space for people to do it. And it made me think of like other spaces that are out there. Like we all have those spaces or places we go to for fill in the blank. You know, again, some people did things for their spirit, their, their spiritual place. They go there, they, you know, that's their holy spot. They feel really good there. There are spaces for some of y'all to get a little wet and moist at. And, you know, that'd be the spot that you go to probably two in the morning when you get that little, hey, big head, what you doing text. You know, you got a space for it. Um, there's a space for, you know, your creativity. And it's just like when because of these spaces, things are designed for it. And when you create your own space, you design things for when you get into that space of what it does. And it was just like, man, this is like what I'm doing with here. They're just like really like changed a lot of stuff. And as I got clear on my purpose, it made me reflect on a lot of a lot of changes with Connect Seven, and for those of you man who've been listening to me since 2018, which by the way, uh, side note, this is this makes the this makes the fifth year for the podcast. By the way, just throwing that out there, I just realized that this is yeah our five year anniversary has hit because I started the podcast in November 2018. Whew. well. That is a celebration. Um, I need to make this a thing. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. But back to focus on the topic. It's like if those are there, like for all uh, for all of you who've been with me since November like 2018 and just been listening to the beginning, the purpose of the podcast has changed damn near every year. And I it used to bother me because I'm like, bro, I just want to be consistent. And I realized that the podcast and everything changed as I changed and as I grew. And I was always trying to figure out what the podcast was like for, as y'all know, in the beginning, it was just like human connection, you know, helping people connect with those around them. Um, then it was just kind of like stuff with communication and it was just like teaching people how to just connect and connect with themselves. And it was just so, so much. And I was just like, huh. And even now, like now that I got that purpose, I'm crossing my fingers because I feel like this is it. <laughs> but I have that purpose, and it's just like this feels right. This feels good because people would ask me, "Well, what's the podcast about?" And I'm just like, "Gosh, there's so much that the podcast is about." Because I don't just talk about one thing. There's so many things, but they come around these different areas that I was like, "This is what we're gonna stick with." And so now I'm just like. Yes. And so it serves as like when I do talk about it, it's like there's people who either are for it and are not for it. And I'm just like, I'd rather be, you know, in a place where there's people who are for it and they hop on it versus those who are like, yeah, because I was like, I don't want that. I don't want the typical shit that you listen to every day. Like, oh, I'm listening to this and this is going to help with my mental. And it's like, I'm not saying those things aren't important, but I don't want to have the, tip, the typical podcast where it's just like, yeah, you listen to this podcast and it's just this, and it's just like, no, bitch, when you hear this podcast and you know you connect, we for to talk about some different shit on here, shit that really matters, and it's like going to be shit that really like makes you feel some things. I'm probably going to reveal a lot of stuff about y'all that y'all didn't say to nobody, which has happened a lot on the podcast, by the way. But it's, it's done a secret. I'll say it about you. You know, it'll be between me and you when you're listening to this in your own house, my own house, and you'll be good. But... That's that's what it was. I was just like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about important shit. And these are the things that I feel like people need to get in and tap into and learn. And it's not for everybody. And I'm okay with that. And it's just like, bro, sometimes shit, I don't even want to deal with it. But the way spirit be <laughs> popping up for me, I'm kinda in this world. I got no choice. And so it's like, we're going to talk about that because I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who experienced the things that I do. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of y'all who want to experience some of the things that I do because it's like, bruh, 
I will say in that spirit world of things, it has definitely helped me avoid certain things and certain people. Yeah, certain situations, too, because, man, it's something different when you're blindsided by something. And it's another thing when you shake hands with somebody and your energy just like, nah, I ain't, I ain't fucking with the energy. I don't know why. Uh uh-uh. And I am one of those people, if y'all meet me, I am real chill. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to fuck with you in some way or you know, shape or form. But it's very rare that I just don't like a person. And I tell people that. I'm like, it is very, it's very rare. Very, very rare. And I had to learn, like, <laughs> I learned real quick. I was like, I don't know why, but I just don't like this bitch. And they'd be like, why you don't like Miss, I don't know, why you don't like Miss Gracie? I'm like, you know, I don't know what it is, but I don't like the bitch. Like, she nice. She ain't do nothing wrong to me. I done seen her help the kids. I done seen her volunteer. You know what I mean? I done seen old girl break her back for some of these people out here. But I just don't like the bitch for some odd reason. And then later on, I, I figure out why I don't like the bitch later on down the reason. Down the line, because it's just like, yeah, nah, them, them, them senses was telling me something. And it's just like, yeah, there's a reason why I don't like her. And then I find out like, yeah, Miss mm, Gracie, Miss Gracie don't like everybody. And they're like, what do you mean she don't like everybody? She don't like everybody. She like a particular group of human beings. And they're like, oh, I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. I was like, I I don't, yeah. And it's just funny. Like, it is crazy. And it even makes me think of like, they're like my last job. I can say it now because I ain't working there. My last job, everybody was like cool with this one girl. And I was like, I don't like her. Like, I'm talking about when she would be around, she come in a room. I know my faces are, are doing things. And people who are close to me, like, why did what's what's going on? I was like, nothing. And there's was like, what did it? What like, what's up? I'm like, bro, I it, it, I don't know. I just don't like her. And I and it, it comes out later, like, this bitch don't be doing shit. She she lies. She does it. And she mind you, she did nothing to me. But I see it all. I witnessed it all. And I'm just like, yeah, this is why I didn't like her. I I was supposed to stay away from her, and that's great. But again, I'm sure some of y'all experience this and probably on deeper levels, you know, it might explain why, you know, some of y'all don't get along with certain people. But with that being said, guys, um, I I appreciate you all for, for coming to this, you know, this, this, this great talk. And I actually feel better um, about this. And I actually really do look forward to talking more and helping all of you out. Again, um, just for some of you who have asked me, yes. um, Because I feel like the the question that has been on a lot of people's mind, and for some of you who are listening, is like, well, what type of stuff are you going to get into specifically? Because you kind of got us in, you introduced us into this, but what does these episodes look like? you know, moving forward. And so I've been asked a lot of questions on how to connect with your ancestors. So I'll do things on that. Um, You know, I have these gifts, but I have no idea like how to work with them or understand them, you know, this, that, and the other. I'll talk on that. Um, There's a lot of things that I will say for for those of you who listen, like if you're a part of the newsletter, send me an email or Hell, if you're on the um, Connect Sevens like IG or anything like that or Facebook, send a message if y'all have like questions y'all would like me to answer on the podcast. And, you know, we can do that. Like I have ideas and I have I can reference from some of the conversations that I've had with other people. But if y'all would like me to talk more on a particular topic, feel free to reach out to me again, either through the email or on the, you know, social medias, and I can cover those, you know, in the episode. There's also going to be another surprise later for you guys, but that's after I finalize some things. But yeah, guys, um, like I said, there'll be questions that I'll ask, you know, how do you get into this spiritual world if you have none of those things that I've mentioned, but you've been very curious about what does it look like getting into that world? Um, you mentioned magic. That sounds scary to me that that sounds like some crazy shit. So 
ha ha what we finna talk about with that and it's more so i think i'll start off with how i was introduced into it by clearing a lot of your we'll say uh misinformation right um and letting you know that this world isn't like crazy and scary like people may think it is and you'll find that you probably are utilizing a lot of magic but you don't even know and you may think it's just spiritual gifts so i will probably just kind of slowly do introductions into that world more so and then obviously the goal is to make it to where everything is how can i put this everything is simple like you can utilize the things that I'm telling you in just simple, like in simple ways, I, I'm really missing the word here. But basically what I'm saying is like making it to where these things I'm saying to you guys, like it can be done in simple steps. Um, I really want to get this word, but it's going to bother me. And I'm, I know I'm going to get it once I finish the episode. And I'm going to be pissed. But basically, yeah, making it to where it's easy steps for you guys to use in your life. And it not be so woo woo or so far away or so complicated. So, yeah, I'm going to beat my ass because I can't think of this goddamn word. I could just pause the episode and just like, yeah, but no, I'll be I'll be authentic. But with that being said, guys, that is it. I appreciate you for pressing play. And honestly, I look forward to the next episode because we really fit to talk about some unhinged shit that i've been wanting to talk to y'all about but with that being said guys enjoy the rest of your day and i look forward to talking to you soon later later